It's a big match morning and this is a big match venue. As venues go, they don't come much more impressive than Rutland Water in Leicestershire. Now, there aren't many sports that have been more adversely affected by the restrictions of the global pandemic than competition fly fishing. But the sport is back. After two years in the wilderness, this enormous piece of water is hosting the Airflow Spring Invitational. We're back, what's this like? It's fantastic to be back. This is our first team comp for the best part of two years and I think we're all really buzzing. It's great to be back in the team environment. Lots of banter, lots of uh, lots of laughs. Oh, fantastic. Sorely missed, sorely missed. It's, like, it's fantastic to everyone happy together again. People smiling behind you, like, it's great, it's great. Um, it's the same but a little bit different with everything going on. You can just feel there's a, it's a different atmosphere. Um, but. Everybody will be coil springs and ready to go, I'm sure, as soon as they hit the water, but it does feel a wee bit different, you know? What's it been like not having this? Oh, it's been very kind of disheartening, you know what I mean? Kind of, everybody just loves the competition fishing, and without having it, it's just, I think everybody's kind of just been really not too happy. <laughs> what have you missed about the sort of the whole team thing? Well, it's exactly that. It's, it's the, the team, you know, fishing with the lads all the time, getting out there in the water, having the, having the crack, and yeah, seeing all, all the old faces again. It's, yeah, it's great to be back out again. In 2019, it was the Welsh based Nymphomaniacs, led by the imperious Kieran Jenkins, who lifted the trophy. They beat the Scots team Change Fly Fishing into second by just one fish. In this competition, anglers fish for two days, split into teams of six. Each angler's paired with someone from another team at the draw. This year, there are 132 competitors in 22 teams, with 66 boats on the water. It's a catch and release contest, meaning all the fish go back. It's a race to bag up and capture your 12 fish limit the fastest. The match is fished to lock style rules, the oldest form of fishing competition in the world, dating back to the 19th century. Fishing takes place from free drifting boats. No weighted flies are allowed, just different types of fly lines which float or sink. We'll explain a bit more about that later on. Well, I can't do this without some help. And the first thing I need to do today is apologize to this man. This is Gareth Jones, the organizer of the competition, because what I've done again is stopped him from fishing. I'm yeah. very sorry. <laughs> so you should be. Second, second match on the bounce now, Andy. And you say on the bounce, it's two years apart. I mean, exactly. it's been a long time, hasn't it? It has been a long time. And uh, I had a little bit of uh, butterflies in my stomach this morning, watching all the guys go out. Really wanted to be part of it, but hey, at least the guys are out there fishing again. Isn't it a great buzz as well to be back? It is. Seeing all the old faces, you know, and a, and a good crack with all the people you haven't seen for a long time. Just fantastic. Now, we know how special this venue is. Um, how do you see this match going? We've got two days fishing ahead of us. And the competition, you know, it's very, very intense. There's some very good anglers. Oh, this is the top 120 anglers in the UK. That's a fact. Now, what you've got here is that the match traditionally has been held in May. Prime buzzer time, big bag numbers. All of a sudden, when you move into June, fish start feeding differently. Start feeding on pin fry, smaller items on the surface. All of a sudden, it becomes a heck of a lot more technical. And with that, brings its own challenges. <laughs> so what's going to happen is, is that the place hasn't been stocked for two weeks. There aren't no fresh stockies for them to go and beat up with their blobs. They're going to have to fish for these fish and fish hard. So, yeah, it's going to be a really good result, I think. And I think the really talented teams are going to, going to step up. There's a few challenges with the weather, of course, but that's going to actually, I think, help the fishing. The wind's really interesting here at Rutland. Mm. Always a factor in Massive this sort of factor. Um, We've got, as Gareth said, 120 anglers taking part. Um, they're all in teams. We'll explain that as we go. As we are now, we need to start getting into the action and seeing who's doing what, seeing who's going to get a fish or two early on. Just, seen, just had a signal from Sean. Um, we see Lee into a fish. That's his fourth fish. Yeah, well, he was confident. <laughs> He's doing very well, because what, what's the time now? It's not, not even 11 o'clock, and uh, four fish in the boat is great, and anybody's back today. Amazing. Um, can you tell from here? Methods. That's a good fish too, isn't it? Yeah, they're all good fish. They're getting some but Can solid you see fish. what method he's fishing, Gareth? Look, they're all high in the water, the guys. You can see they're all fishing pair lines. Generally, that dictates as a floating line or an intermediate top tip type line. And the guys are fishing fairly slow, so I'd imagine it's a washing line setup. 
or something similar, you know, where they use a boy and fly in the point just to suspend a couple of nymphs or pin fry patterns close to the to the surface. And Sean's had two fish, so he's got some catching up to do. So, you know, in, in sort of five minutes or so, we've drifted behind this boat number 64 and we've seen two fish caught. Brilliant. It's a really good sign, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And it's going to be interesting to see what we see further down the back now. Well, Gareth, we're just pottering behind boat number 42 um, on the pointy end. Highly technical terminology we're using today, <laughs> yeah, which I quite like. Sean McCaffrey, who, of course, last time we were here, 2019 it was, on the first day had an epic day. Oh, Sean is a top-class angler, and um, he's one of these kids who just gets it done every time. He's always in the frame. He fishes. He's from Shetland, and he fishes a lot. Um, and you can see it in the way he, look, he's always looking relaxed. He's always looking like he's, he's got a plan, uh, and nothing seems to faze him. Um, you've got actually two really good teams going head-to-head in that, that boat. You've got Gareth from uh, the Welsh Hawks, who've not won the event yet, but I'd expect to see him in the frame at the end of, uh, end of the weekend. It's a great fishing name, Gareth Jones, don't you think? Well, yeah, <laughs> if it sticks. The, the tactical decisions the guys make in this early stage are all important, though, aren't they? Because if you get it, get it wrong, you're in real trouble. Look, day one is to stay in the frame. Day one is aim for the top five. If you're in that frame, you can win. If you're out of the top five, you've got a lot of work to do. And if you're out of the top 10, then game's over and you may as well just enjoy tomorrow. But um, the guys are really lucky. They've got great conditions. Not great for sunbathing, but in terms of angling, this is epic. You've got nice light ripple, so you've got control over the flies. You've got overcast conditions, fished on light, bright sunshine when the fish is close to the surface. And um, the guys are just going to have a, have a ball with it. I, you know, I know it's fishing a bit tricky, but the conditions are really going to help today. You'll notice those two blue ropes hanging out the back of boat number 42. They're attached to the drogue, which is like a, basically an underwater parachute. That's exactly what it is. With this, this breeze is nice for drifting, isn't it? So the, perfect. The, the breeze will drift them along so you can cover water one, nice and slowly, keep in touch with your flies. One thing that the guys didn't have in practice is, is this sort of condition. So a lot of the practice they've done have been under flat, calm conditions. So they didn't get a chance to move around. When you're drifting, you can cover a lot of water quickly you'll find the good areas. So what this highlights to me is that with that flat calm conditions, people haven't spread around much. They found fish in certain areas and they stick into that game plan to start. If it changes, you know, if it doesn't work for them, then they're gonna have to use their nose and go and find somewhere else. Now you've heard us talk a little bit about lines and things like that and flies. At some point um, in the next day or so, we will explain to you a bit more about the lines so you understand the science behind what the guys are fishing and why. Um, but as we are at the moment, we're looking at floating lines or certainly intermediates, aren't we? Uh, I can see Gus is on a 12-foot slow tip, which is a really nice line just for bed and the flies in. A lot of the times, if the guys are fishing the booby on the top, if the booby's on the top, the fish don't want to take it actually off the top. They actually take it as it dips under. It's a real subtle technique, and that line allows you to control that little bit of uh, disturbance, but then drop it into the zone and get the take. So for those who don't understand a 12 foot tip, that's a 12 feet of the line sink very slowly under the surface slowly. and the rest of the line floats. Correct. Now we've been steaming around for a little while, Gareth, and we're now looking over at boat number one. The man on the engine is angler number one, isn't he? Kieran Jenkins, oh, the he's, legend. <laughs> he's up there with the best of them, to be fair to him. Yeah, very good angler. I think he's had one fish, so it isn't happening for him today. I think he's moving his flies a little bit too fast. I'm, I'm just talking out to turn here a little bit but the guys I've seen catching have been fishing a lot slower than that and he's moving his flies very very quickly and the man on the other end of the boat is John Buchanan great guy great angler uh, John I was fortunate I shared a boat with John once so I I was lucky to win this Bob Shears classic um, it was a funny day actually because I was wasn't fishing particularly well and I borrowed a few flies off John did he know well, he, he actually gave them to me, and I think he wish he hadn't at the end of the day. He was one of those. Uh, you, know, but, but, the, you say that, but this is one of the great things about Lockstyle, and one of the things I've missed, you know, the two years kind of fallow period that we've had with COVID, you know, it, we've been able to go fishing, of course we have, but this this kind of brotherhood, that this totally. sport, it, it really is, isn't it? You know, yeah. the... the Everyone here is, we're all mates. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a number which I keep in my head, and I reckon there are about 300 consistent lock style competition anglers in the UK. And you've got 120 of them here today. They all know each other. We've all been doing it for years. 
and we absolutely love this this competition element. You know, I said earlier, I, I was totally getting when I watched them all leave the, the boat jetty without me this morning. <laughs> Again, I need to apologise. Uh, the other thing, of course, so that people understand who may not know about lock style, these are not professional anglers. These are butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, people who fish for a hobby because they love it. Yeah. And the competition, this costs a fortune to do this, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not a cheap, it's not a cheap sport at all, you know, and, and these guys will have given up five days you know three days this week practice they would have come down on a wednesday some of the guys have been here since monday you know taking it really seriously the change boys always put in a lot of practice um but yeah but it's what we love you know and if you enjoy it then that's the way it is taken a little bit of a break it's not often you get to see inside the tackle box of a top class angler who did you borrow this one from i was going to say i've been called a lot of things i've never been called that andy <laughs> <laughs> but as promised what i wanted to do was talk a little bit about the science behind some of this fishing especially the fly lines so gareth there's a fair array of reels and all sorts of other stuff in here yeah, that's just, just run us through okay one that's just the surface of it there's another 15 to 20 different lines inside the box as well but the logic is is that with the fly fishing, we need to present a depth using the line rather than the, the traditional float or the traditional lead weight. So we need that control. But what I've got here is a array of lines. Uh, top of the box, Mashman's favorite, you've got sink three, sink five, sink seven. And they're available in three different configurations. So I've got 40 plus, which is a distance line, something you're gonna cast a long way with, great in a calm day or off the shore. But if you get a windy day, that's not a nice line to handle. So you go to a straight, what we call a DI3, DI5 or DI7. And then on the top shelf, we've got what we call a sweep lines. So later on in the year, when fish start taking up different layers in the water column, you're not quite sure where they're gonna be. What you'll do is you use these lines, which come through the water column in this big sweep. So then depending on where you get the takes during the, during the cast, you can tell if it's early in the retrieve, He's up high in the water. Maybe you change to a different line, different tactic. So you'll use that searching technique just to find the level and then dial it in afterwards when the fish have not, don't want to cheer so much. So. And just to just so you understand, when Gareth's talking about die three, die five, die seven, die three means that it sinks at three inches per second. Die five is five inches per second. Die seven, seven inches. There's even die eights, aren't there? That's there really are, fast. there are, but that's for early season or real high summer when the fish have dropped through the, through the thermocline, gone deep and just, they don't want to come up. You've got to go after them. And in those situations, an extra inch per second on the sink rate over a 30 second count is a lot further down the water column, so. Now, the other thing is, of course, we've seen already uh, at some points this morning, people using what you call tip lines, so sink tips, so basically only part of the line Correct. sinks. Just explain those to us too. Okay, so you, you start at the top with your floating line, then you can have various length tips and they'll sink at ranges from half an inch per second on six or 12 foot length down to one and a half inch per second again at sort of up to 12, 15 feet in length. So using that, when you found that level, you can really present well and hold it there. So it's all about presenting at fish's eye level or slightly above. Fish don't generally want to look down, at least the trout don't, they use the, <laughs> the, use the silhouette as a bit of a sight feeder. So, you know, it's just all about how many times can you present well at the right depth throughout the day. And that's what match fishing is all about. It's just dialing it all in, taking away all the anomalies and just trying to keep it in the feeding zone for the longest possible period you can. Well, Gareth, we're behind boat number 40 and on the engine, double world champion Ian Barr. There are a few anglers who know this piece of water better than he. And I understand he has not yet had a fish. Yeah, that can change though, Andy. It can change rapidly on this game. I think what he's done is quite a clever move. If you look up behind us, there's a lot of boats there. The fish would have got the pressure. He's dropped down 500 yards and he's waiting for them to build up on this downward shore. If he finds them, he'll go to town on them. It's very early days. Competition fishing can change in a matter of 20 minutes. It takes one cast to catch a fish, it takes one cast, sometimes, one cast sometimes to catch two fish, you know? 
they can all change fast. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule him out yet. I know what you're saying, but even if you're a double world champion, you need a pull just to get your confidence. Surely <sighs> he's confident enough. He's going to be fine. <laughs> He'll be just fine. Well, he's never uh, been short of confidence. No, he? that's a, that's not something he's been short of. Um, yeah, but look, this this just goes to prove how difficult it is. If it was easy, he would have been on five or six fish by now, you know. Uh, it's not. He's not out of fish. But as I said, it can all change very, very quickly. You can see we've started to see a few fish rising. The guys in the boat next to us, they've already come up on, you know, more subtle tactics, floating lines. I think one of them's fishing dries. I think Alan's fishing dries. And Matthew's probably got like a, a lightweight nymph stroke washing line set up. But... They're trying to target feeding fish now. I think the, the easy ones have been done. The blob fish have been caught, and now you're going to have to fish for them. We've already seen a few fish further out the horizon, so you know if you target those, good anglers will, will pick them off. This is your favourite sort of fishing, isn't it? I know yeah, you this. yeah, this is what I, I start to enjoy. Believe it. Boat 34, Gareth. There's another little rainy squall comes in, and a fish on. Yeah, he's just done well. Uh, the boys have, I think they've pulled a blind out, to be honest, because I'm looking back up where the fish were top of the wind on the Yellowstone. And on this wind, I, I was pretty sure they were going to run over to this bank with the pressure. And these guys have found them on their own. Um, you, you did actually say that earlier. I did, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's predictable, but when you fish a lot of these competitions, you, you, you can see the fish movement. The only worry on this side was the, the water clarity, because if there's any algae in the water, then it's going to build up bottom of the wind. don't think it's built up enough to put the fish off, and uh, these boys could be really on for some, some good sport and maybe a big big bag. And also, like you said earlier on, one of the things about this, of course, is if there are no other boats over here, there's no other pressure. No, no pressure at all. And uh, there's no other pressure from anglers either, which is something that can put you off. You know, when you're in amongst 10 boats and you see a rod go over and another rod go over, yes, you've seen two fish get caught, but inside your head, everybody's catching and you're not. Whereas when you're on your own, you can just focus on your fishing. So, top man, well done. So Gareth, we've wandered over to the damn wall and it's pretty busy over here. I think I counted on the way in 22 or 23 boats. We're looking at boat number 60 uh, on the point Ocean Davenport and on the engine Richard Slater. We've seen a few fish. What's going on? Uh, you look at the water quality here. We've pulled into water now and what's happened is any of the sediment that's been blown down the wind has made this area very clear and the fish have obviously pulled into the clear water. Clear water means they can see the flies. You say we've, we've only been here 10 minutes and we've seen three fish landed. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? What, what sort of methods are you seeing from looking around? I've seen you kind of seen the radar on. Yeah, the radar's saying they're twiddling. And what I mean by that twiddling. is, yeah, yeah, it's just slow figure eight retrieving, dropping the flies through, holding them in a zone, um, generally with floating or tips. Um, but yeah, there's no um, big secret to it. It's, it's more like underwater space in there, there's Andy. You pick a drift, try and make it as clean as you can, make sure that the fish are going to be less disturbed in front of your water, and you aim for those gaps. How difficult is it in these circumstances, because obviously these boats are not under power, they're free drifting, um, to you know, keep out of the way of everybody else, because there is an etiquette involved here, there isn't is. there? Look, as long as you do it slowly, you can get between everybody. What people get really angry with is when you carve them up at 100 miles an hour and cut up their fish. Um, you know, generally what you want to do is just go around the outside edge, get yourself to the back of the boats and then just drift slowly through, you know. It appears something's happening over here. We've got boat 31 with Russo and we've talked about one double world champion in the shape of Ian Barr. And Russ, of course, former world champion, is not having a bad match and it looks like a couple of his teammates around him also doing pretty well. Yeah, you've got Russ is on five, you've got uh, Dave Harpy's already on five as well. Gazza Dixon, we've just seen him land another one, he's at eight now, so these guys aren't in a pack, there's not more than 100 yards between them, and they've, they're working these fish between them, and, oh, and Dave's into another one. There's there a fish go. on 41 there, that's yeah. perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. That fish has just gone aerial for a second. Yeah, these um, are one of my fancy teams, and uh, they're, all, they're always going to be in the frame, and uh, judging by what they're doing today, this could really set them up for for day two. It's fascinating isn't it these little edges that people find in these matches I mean what, what do you think it is they're doing that maybe the others haven't cottoned on to? I think they found some fish Andy I think they found a pot of fish in a nice part of the lake to fish as in they've got control top of the wind um, and, and the fortunate part is the, the colours dropped out of the water so what yeah. fish are you feeding? The water clarity thing is is clearly an issue because you know even in those good areas that we were looking at earlier on 
which you you said you know you'd favour sight feeding fish you you just can't odds it can you you can't that's the thing is cl clear water fish will pull into it and they feed in the net look yeah. ah well done Dave so that's his sixth then yeah not a bad score they got 19 fish between three rods <laughs> I said this morning, anybody with 30 fish for the team today, done well. And in the context of what we've seen, you know, they're, they're, the hawks are going to be well up there, aren't they, with definitely, that? That's definitely. fantastic fishing. Great fishing. And guess what? They've got another two hours left to go today. This isn't ended. These, I wouldn't be surprised if Gazza Dixon finishes off his, his 12 fish, which I didn't think was going to happen today. I didn't think we'd see it, but uh, fair play to him. He's fishing really well. So with this... This little trio here, I mean, is this, this is clearly a team plan between these three. Yeah, look, when you come out, it's plan A, plan B. Plan A works. If it goes off, you go looking for your mates. You find someone. If they've got more fish than you, great, you stay there. If there were more fish where you were, you pull him back to it. So, you know, it's a well-orchestrated game plan. And Russ, in fairness to him, he's pretty good at the game plan stuff. He's been around a long time, and they do fish well, really well as a unit, so... No surprises. Hoppy's in again, Gareth. Yeah, they, these boys are working in. You can see now Russell is just taking the outside line. He's going to get back up behind them, cut anybody else off from getting in on the drift, and just close <laughs> all out. They're working I brilliant. Love it. Uh, honestly, it's like uh, it's like watching a game of rugby where people are closing each other out. It's yeah, it's a bit brutal, but it works. And again, I, I like the way he's playing the fish because that's the second one we've seen him landing. Like you said, taking his time. Yeah. You know, I've, I've always subscribed to this harder you pull, harder they pull back thing. It's, it's no question, these rainbows sometimes go properly, don't they? Oh, they're strong fish. And at this time of year, they really fit. You know, I mean, they've been stocked early on the season. They've taken on condition from the food. A lot of swimming around the reservoir. They've got, you know, got a lot of muscle about them. So when you hook one of these things, you're really going to know that it's, uh, it's on the end. It's going to give you a good tug. So is that seven for... Yeah, yeah, the score is ticking away. Yeah, they're doing very, very well. So the anglers are coming off the water after a fantastic day here at Rutland. I think one or two of them have found it to be quite tough though. So let's go and chat to a few and see how they think they've got on. We stuck to our game plan, uh, our two, three areas. Doesn't seem to have paid off that well, is it? No, so we knew far? the fish on the dam, but we didn't. It's a bit of a gamble. It was coloured yesterday. Obviously, it's cleared overnight. Fish come off a dam today, haven't we? So. Um, could have been better, to say the least. I mean, as a team performance, I think we've done all right with the averages, but we don't really know what the average is yet. Uh, but for myself, a bit disappointed. Uh, lost too many fish. Bit of a bad decision to go out and light a leader. Um, which Ooh. cost me two fish, including me standing on my line. Uh, so overall, ended up with three, but yeah, I would have been happy with half a dozen. So, chaps, I'm sensing that things may have gone okay for you. What's the story? Yeah, no, it's been quite good. It's been a good day. Uh, one of the lads has got the limit, uh, I've had eight, and we've all had threes and fours, so I've picked them up quite nicely during the day. Lee, we saw your first thing with a couple of fish. You're coming off the water now with 12. Yep. Tell us how your day went. Uh, when you see me, I had four. And it went dead. Then it come on about last two hours. I can't tell you where because uh, we've got tomorrow. Oh, there's to go some tomorrow. secrets out there. <laughs> so, yeah. Although there were 459 fish caught on day one, Lee was one of only three anglers to catch his 12 fish limit as testing conditions caused by coloured water pushed the teams all the way. On top of the table, the Menteith Ospreys led the pack with 45 fish. Craig Barr's Reservoir Dogs were second with the Welsh Hawks nicely placed in third. It was all to play for on day two. So Michael, engines are roaring behind us on the second day. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? Because you're leading, you must be so pleased. Yeah, we are, yeah, as a team we did really well yesterday. So it's all to play for today. It's different weather conditions. It's a bit windier. Yeah, we're, we're gonna try our best as a team. What was the sort of the tactical plan yesterday? Because something obviously worked for all of you. It did, yeah. We um, deployed three boats at the top of the water. It paid off. Uh, it had been coloured until now, um, but the fish were there. Whether they're there today or not, we don't know. 
Do you know the thing I love about this competition is people come from all over. Yeah. You guys are obviously Scottish anglers. You know, yeah. the, the water you're used to fishing is very different to what some of the others. Do you think that's given you a bit of an advantage, maybe? Mm, yeah, no. Trout are all the same, so we're doing our best and that's it. <laughs> Plans today then, what's going to happen? Uh, much the same as yesterday. Maybe a few subtle changes, but yeah, a bit of luck. That's all we can ask for. And how are the nerves? Fine. Nips. Cool as a cucumber. Enjoy it. I'll let That's you get on with thing. it. Good man. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Gareth, we're out on the water. The second day is underway. The weather conditions very different, and uh, the guys have headed off. I've, I've got a real sense today. Firstly, this is going to be a cracking day's match fishing. Secondly, there are a lot of nerves. There People are. are very nervous. There it's are. very exciting. There are. It's on a knife edge, isn't it? We, we saw yesterday a couple of teams really put it together, got some big scores, but with the point system, you can all flatten yourself out today. It's great, isn't it? You know, yeah, so there's real jeopardy involved, you know, and a lot of areas pulled up as well. I got, I got it, I called it wrong yesterday. He did. I did. My, uh, my logic of the fish running down the wind would have been perfect had, had it not been for all the the uh, algae in the water. Yeah. You read the weather conditions, you looked at the wind, yeah. and you said we should have gone that way, basically. Yeah. Whereas, actually, at that end of the reservoir, the water was crystal clear. Well, that's what happened. Cleared yeah. up top of the wind. Those fish were able to see the flies. They pulled back soon. And the guys who got on it early, they got in amongst them. If you can find a patch of clear water, there'll be a net and you'll catch them. So, whilst these guys are all going, like the dam looks really crowded now, and what part of that will be Look, the guys caught it yesterday, everybody pulls in. That adds its own pressure. Yeah. It adds pressure on the guys who did well yesterday because there's more people there in amongst them and they're going to be fighting for fish. And it'll put pressure on the fish and I think they'll pull out off the dam. i got a feeling that this Norman mountain bank will come into play later in the day. Fish will push out. Water's been blowing this direction now, so the clear water will have pushed even further out from the dam wall. And I think further down maybe by the church will be a, a key spot later in the day. A couple of interesting things, out of 120 anglers in the field, only three caught their 12 fish limit yesterday. Um, it's really all to play for, really tight at the top. What do you think, top 10, realistically? Realistically it could be, because point system means that day one is day one, and day two is day two. And you could blow it on day two completely and, uh, and pull right back up. So, you know, competition's always about day two for me. You, you, you don't win a match on day one, Andy. <laughs> you can lose them, though. Yeah, now, can. we're heading up to the dam wall, so I'm going to ask Nigel to open the throttle, get us up through the wind, and we'll see what happens later today. Well, Gareth, we've arrived by the dam wall on the way in. We've seen three fish being landed already, boat 50, John Hood, uh, landing quite a nice rainbow. It's kicking off, what's going on? Yeah, it's all starting to happen. Look at the conditions, Andy. It, wind's picked up, a lot more oxygen in the water. The water's clearing. Wind's consistent again today, blowing off the top of the dam. And I think even more water will fish today, just as that wind takes the, the colour further downwind and more, more water clears up, a lot of this area will fish. Well, Gareth, there were three anglers yesterday who bagged up, who had their 12, and we're looking at one of them on the engine, Ronnie Gilbert of the Menteith Ospreys. He's had two fish this morning, and alongside him, Rob Sosby, who's also had two fish. It, it's interesting, this bit of water. What's your feeling? I think you've got two top-class anglers in the boat there. You know, Rob's been around. He's won the Brown Bowl. Ro Ronnie comes down to Rutland and regularly puts a good score together. So, you know, they're putting fish together. It's not kicking off like you... You'd hope it would, but you know, it's a solid score. So yeah, they'll just keep plugging away and, and build the bag over the course of the day. Problem is, is like, if you start thinking, I've got to get 12, you can sometimes get carried away. And what you need to do is set your target, set your target, whether it's a fish an hour or a fish every two hours and fish to your target. If you think it's a four fish day, if you're getting two fish and you're an hour and a half in, you're well out of target, you know? So they, they will have set themselves up what they want to do. and. Uh, be, they're, so, on the, they're on the board anyway. There seems to be a level of intensity this morning, and I think if we look at boat 16, it kind of illustrates the whole thing. Sean Brooks on the pointy end, Craig Barr on the engine, two England internationals, two amazing competitors. 
I know that Sean's had three fish this morning. Craig has not yet had a fish. It's kind of switched off a bit now. It, it, it started with a bang and as predicted, it dropped away. So, you know, I think what you'll see is there'll be a few boats starting to ease out of this area and try and start searching for fish. Looking at the weather conditions today, and obviously the wind's picked up a wee bit and it's dropped a couple of degrees in temperature. Um, what are the, you know, we talked a lot yesterday about people fishing floating lines, lines on the surface with their flies sinking just through the first foot or so of the, of the layers of the water. Where are people going today? What's, what's the difference? They won't go too much deeper, and I think the fish will drop a little bit just because of the boat pressure. I think the bigger change will be, look, you get your couple of fish on the bright stuff to start. They're still, they haven't seen any flies for 24 hours. You'll get your easy fish, and then the lack of colour on the cast will come into it. People will tone it down. They'll start putting darker flies on, things which aren't going to scare, but still get eaten. So that'll be the big change today. Maybe a tip with this, um, like the, the increase in wind, strength will, will, will demand a, a line which beds in and what I mean by that is just if you bed the tip of the line into the water then you've got more control over it. If you've got a straight floating line even though it could be the line that holds the flies right up in the in, in the surface it's harder con, con, to control it and if the wind if the boat's not drifting square you end up having to mend and repeatedly mend just to keep that that line nice and straight so yeah it's all about control. Well, there is Ronnie Gilbert with another fish, so that's your third of the morning. Maybe this is a bit of a comeback, you never know. Oh, no comeback, he's going to do well, you know, he's a top-class angler. And uh, he'll just chip away now, build his bag and do his bit for the team. Yeah, he's just looked at his watch, that's his third one. Happy days. Look at this, Gareth, we've steamed down from the dam wall. Halfway, we've come across boat 31. Yeah, we just Fish in the net. Yeah, back in Spud Bay, yeah. there's a nice little soft spot just off the point here. Yeah. Ian Earls just put a fish in the net and as he was playing it we saw Nicky Long lock up into one which didn't unfortunately stick. Uh, but yeah, lovely little soft spot and I think I can see one of the Welsh hawks up the back there. I think it's Gazza Dixon sneaking around in the back of the bay as well. So, Well there's boat 37 and Russ Owen on the engine and all the talk is that he's had quite a nice brownie, Gareth. Yeah, he reckons it's going to be pushing six so that's a hell of a nice fish. Maybe it'll get the big fish prize. We've got a, a picture competition going on at the weekend. Ooh. So, yeah, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll stand stand in that frame. But uh, I think he'll be up against it. John Buchanan had a very nice fish yesterday as well. So it's all to play for on that game. Well, there's boat number 10 with your oppo, Mr. Kieran Jenkins, who had a tremendous finish to yesterday's fishing. I think he's having a similar day today by the sound of it, Gareth. Yeah, it looks like he's had the one. <laughs> one fish. Always got to get the one, get on the scoreboard. But, you know. Things change quick. As we said yesterday, they came on really strongly for the last couple of hours, so it's probably the mindset, well, you know, stick it out now. And, I mean, his day yesterday, he had a, a gamble in the morning and then a bigger gamble in the afternoon where he moved, which paid off, and he had six fish, I think. And was it in this bit of the, the reservoir as well? Yeah, he was just down here off the green bank, and uh, he, he, his words to me were, <laughs> how he didn't bag up, he didn't know, you know. There were a lot of fish hooked and lost, so... I was to say, they might, might pawn. The other guy who was here as well is Stuart Watkins from Team Airflow. Really nice fisherman, you know, just, just does things and, you know, neat and tidy. Um, so, you know, they've both found these fish. They're both looking for it to come on. Let's see what happens. Tactics in this sort of water, because, I mean, again, very different down here. It's almost flat calm. There's a bit of a breeze rippling the surface. We've seen some fish moving. But what, what sort of approach are we looking at here? Uh, you're looking to put in um, sort of straight floater. You're looking to put in, instead of putting nymphs on the droppers, maybe even put a hoppers on stuff that sinks through the surface film slower. You know, but let's face it, we're still fishing for fish that haven't been introduced that long ago. So finally it looks like food. It's not doing anything stupid. They should grab hold. Well, we're looking at boat 51, and there is Ian Barr on the engine. Um, I'll tell you what, out of all the people yesterday, he didn't have a great day. And I can imagine how much that stung, because this is basically his home water, isn't it? And uh, things didn't go right for him. I'm, I'm sure there's a bit of pride to, to fight for today for Ian. Uh, well, he's pulled back into nice soft water, and he's fishing sort of dries and bits and little bits and pieces on the surface. And we're seeing this fish moving here, so I mean, he's having a bit of sport. I think even if the even if the match doesn't go so well for him, he'll have a good day.
Still, the concentration levels are there, and I mean, you know, the bloke was double world champion. He knows what he's doing here, doesn't he? Well, that Everyone doesn't, has a bad day every look, now and again. Does, that doesn't ever stop, Andy. No. Yeah, when you get to that level in competition, <laughs> that's how you fish. You can't even have a relaxing pleasure day. It doesn't exist. You always want to beat your ball partner. You always want to catch more fish. And it typical with well, that work Ian Barr's putting in, and the bloke next to him is locked up. Yeah, he's good angler. Nick, Nick, Nick's lost a fish and hooked another fish. Now within. 100 yards on that drift so yeah he's obviously got something right but it's pretty clear watching the the kind of the intensity of the way ian's fishing for example that there are fish all around the boat and actually i've just seen one rise just behind the boat yeah. so th th this area is holding fish yeah it must be so frustrating knowing they're there and and just not there's something about the presentation or the flies you know or the fish just not wanting to eat it's, it's just frustration yeah, I'm looking at it, and, and it goes back to what I've been saying. The guys who are fishing slowly seem to be hooking a lot more fish. And if you look at Ian, he's been really working the flies, trying to get the aggression out of them, whereas Nick is kind of half the pace, half of the aggression, and he's getting the lockups. That's interesting. Well, Gareth, we've got about an hour and a half left in the match, and I don't know about you, I have to confess, I have not got a clue who is winning this competition. Now, no. that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it makes for an exciting finish. It's going to be interesting, this. It's going to be a great way in. Uh, what we've got is we've got quite a few of the flash attack boys have turned up here in Belgrano. Now, we've got five of the six team members here, and they're starting to put a few fish together. So, you know, they're, I think they're averaging about three or so a man at the minute. Boat 26 on just a, you know, 15 or 20 metres away from boat 25 and there's Tim Joyce from Flash Attack. Again, you know, no one's taking this apart, are they? It's, it's what you're, makes it for a fascinating match. You're not going to, Andy, and I think that the fact that these guys are coming on here into undisturbed water, they've, they've caught what's here to be caught. Yes, they could catch a couple more if they stick around, but if, I, you, know, if you were brave, you just keep on working your way down the shoreline. And, and hitting that water first and just taking whatever's there. So you're saying essentially what you're trying to do then is just cover as much water as you can, yeah. looking for fresh stuff all the time. Doing a little bit of clever trevoring where you just go into the clean bits. <laughs> <you know? laughs> We're looking at boat 11, uh, where Scott Graham is playing a fish. But over to our right, we have boat number one. And I'm starting to get a feeling it might be the men teeth boys who oh, are going to hold on to their lead from day one because ah, well, we know that the rest of the guys were catching fish in the dam earlier yeah. we've just run into michael low top rod yesterday and he's already got 10 fish which on today's work is fantastic yeah. it was really good build a great bag of fish well we thought 10 was best but there's a sight gareth yeah well we've pulled into barnsdale nice bit of calm slack water and keith tanner his boat partner's just locked up as well uh, Kitana's got his 12. I don't know what time he finished, but uh, he's just about to help his pal put, put one in the net. I think you've got Tom Burnett there from uh, Nielsen. There's obviously a... quite a few fish in there because, you know, we've seen a couple of strikes at fish and yeah. obviously Keith's had his 12. Yeah. You know, and it's a lovely bit of water, isn't it? Just it really is. nice. It's all softened in here. The water clarity is excellent. Um, and like we said, if someone can pull away from the crowd, find themselves a little bit of calm, they're going to do really well. And just to explain, if you look over to the, the left-hand side and see there's a yacht steaming past in the main basin, going probably 15 knots or so, it just goes to prove that, you know, in these little bays where it's tucked away, you're so sheltered. I mean, that thing is flying. Look at the speed that's going, Gareth. Yeah, yeah, scary. Well, boat number one is in. It's not Michael Lowe, it's Paul Mitchell, his boat mate. Well, he's had the last three bits of action, to be fair to him. And that was a lovely hook set. You could see him, he came up on the hang, held the line, line went tight, and he batted it. Fair play. It was really nice angling to watch, because, well, it's the first rise we've seen since we've been in here as well. So <laughs> we're just talking about how many fish we well, hadn't seen right yet. Look at that. Yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah, well done. Top man. Michael will be desperate to get one of those. He's just looking yeah. over a bit jealously. Um, as we just said, he's on 10 fish. Oh, that's a great result. You know, 10 fish today is great. 12 fish yesterday. I think we're going to be handing him the top rod prize unless oh, there's some 22 other... 22 fish. You know, that's some going, that isn't is it? That is incredible over the two days. And I get the feeling in this bay he's not finished yet because we've seen a little bit of action and it's just a case of him getting it right, isn't it? Well, you he's, know. 
he's got a good 30, 35 minutes to get it done. And that's two casts. Yeah. Can two casts in the right place. Two casts can change your day. Not, not that they're going to change his day, but they could get back done. Well, he knew it was going to come. <laughs> and there he is, Michael Lowe, into another fish. Now, if he lands this one, it'll be number 11. It's funny, I was chatting to him this morning and he said, this isn't his sort of fishing, he's a river angler. I think he's lying to you. I think he's a very good all-round angler and uh, he's one of those guys that really gets it. And you, you find that as well, top river anglers, when they transfer to still water, they under, understand a lot, of, a lot of things that some of the still water guys don't, so it really puts them in a good position. I'll tell you one other thing. Oh, just his boat partner struck at a fish then. He didn't make a bout with that, did it? It was the take in the net and released within 15, 20 seconds. That's confidence for you. When it's happening, Andy, you can make it happen. But when you're not getting many takes and you gingerly play them, that's usually when they fall off. And there's boat 12 with Matt Griffiths and another one sat in his hand. Yeah, Gary's got it done as well. Gary Morris got it done. Good angler. Um, see Craig Barr's just turned up as well. So, you mean, he got a lot of... Where's our dogs in the bay as well? See, this is the other team that we've got to keep an eye on here because they were second going into day two. And, you know, we know they've all had some fish. And if Scott has had his 12, you know, and I'm sure Craig will fight all the way to the end. Now, of course, the, the delicate balance here is that you don't want to leave it too long in this bay because it's a fair old journey back to the pontoon, isn't it? Yeah, you're going you're gonna to need safely 25 minutes in this wind. Um, 20 and a push you know if you're a fish on 25 minutes you'll play it but you don't leave any longer you want to be back on the jetty in time not with four horsepower to play with yeah good luck with that one especially as you go up into the into the wind as you come up around the corner going over the peninsula so what's that feeling like sat with your feet up like that gareth knowing that you've got your 12 and your boat partner still fishing that must be fantastic absolutely nothing like it absolutely nothing like it i can see uh sean's hooked a fish with uh with craig yeah, it looks like he's got a long leader on. He's going to have to stand up to net it. That's the only trouble with the long leaders. You've got that point fly a long way away and your, your top drop is very close to the eye of the, of, the, of the fly rod. And if that gets caught, the fish runs, you just got no, nowhere to go. You know, you just break the line. There it is, safely in the net. Good man. Well, a couple of minutes ago, we saw boat 11, Scott Graham, putting the net under a fish, and that was his 12th. Yeah. And now, there is Michael Lowe. And he's done the same. And he's done the same. So, Brilliant. Well, isn't it amazing that we've come to this little bay and we're now we've got Scott Graham, we've got Michael Lowe. You've got Dave Hoppy. Dave Hoppy at the other end of, has had 12. And also so four anglers in this little piece of water have all had their 12. And, and it's all happened this afternoon, isn't I it? I see another one who looks like he's bagged as well. So whoever's on the point at the end of boat 12, Keith Tanner came in here, quarter, I think he said quarter of one, and at half past two he bagged up. Wow. Yeah. That's, so they obviously fish have pulled in, softer water, didn't have any pressure, and they've gone to town on it. They're saying there's no surprises here. I think everybody realises we've won this event. The Menteith Ospreys with 92 fish over the two days, which I think is a pretty exceptional result. So let's congratulate the boys and uh, give them a round of applause. Michael, what's it like holding that thing? Good, yeah, yeah. Um, we spoke this morning and I said we had a chance. We're going to make some subtle changes. We did. Uh, we didn't go to the same areas as we did yesterday. We moved around a bit. We had some good consistent catches. And yeah, we got the fish and we all got a suntan. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> I mean, it's a fair achievement to, yeah. to lead the event after day one and hold on to that lead. And you know, because everyone was pushing, they knew where you'd gone, the tactics. Every, you know, there are very few secrets on the second day. Sure. You must be very proud of the team for holding on. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's actually not a good thing to be in first place going into a two-day comp. It's nice to be aiming for something, but yeah, we kept our cool, we did what we could, and we got a result at the end. So, yeah, it's great. Well, I suppose my summary of this weekend, Mr Jones, would be when we arrived yesterday, 
and started seeing everybody getting together. No one was really sure what was going to happen. No one had seen each other for two years. Certainly nobody had competed against each other. We spent two days drifting around on this fantastic piece of water on boats. The company's been great. The fishing's been even better. I reckon that's job done, don't you? Oh, it's been fantastic, Andy. It's just been good to get back out in the water, get all the guys together again, see all the people you haven't seen for so long. Special. Fishing's been good as well, hasn't it? Especially today. It's been fantastic. Hey, look at the run numbers of fish people have caught today. It's huge, Andy. It's, they were like five or six bag-ups. You know, we, yesterday we had three bag-ups. We got more bag-ups today and in conditions which you're thinking, well, it could go either way. So it's been pretty exceptional. Very, very happy organiser. Very, very good. The thing about competition fishing is it's a bit addictive. You know, once you've done it once, you want to keep coming back again. And the guys here have had to wait two years for their chance since 2019 to 2021 after everything that's happened. Let's hope we don't have to wait another two years for the chance for Menteith to come and defend their title.